Today we have the water blessing. And as I mentioned, water doesn't clean the mind. It's good actions that clean the mind. Words, deeds, and particularly there are three teachings the Buddha has on right mental conduct. And it's good to keep these in mind. They're a foundation for the meditation. They're a foundation for the practice. They mentioned in a sutta where a Brahmin comes to see the Buddha and he talks about Brahmins who can wash away your sins. And the Buddha doesn't mention it in that context, but there's, a, there's another fine poem in the Pali Canon where a slave woman is going down into the edge of a river one night. She has to get some water for her, her mistress. She sees a Brahmin bathing in the cold water at night and asks him why he's doing that. He says, well, it's to wash away his sins. She has a great line. He said that the water in the river could wash away your sins and all the turtles and fish and crocodiles in the river would go to heaven. When the Buddha is talking to the Brahman, he teaches three types of conduct for the mind. Lack of greed, particularly lack of inordinate greed. Lack of ill will and right view. Making your views straight, he says. How do you develop a lack of greed? Well, part of it is the practice of what's, what's called empathetic joy. You see that people are, other people have things and you're happy for them. You see them doing good things and you're happy for them. The word mudita has lots of other cognates in the Pali language. One of them is anamodana which is what the monks do when they chant at the end of a meal, or at the beginning of a meal after a donation. Expressing happiness not only for the fact that other people have things, but also they're doing good things. This is an attitude that's really worthwhile to develop. You see other people being generous, you see other people being virtuous, you see other people meditating. You're happy for them, you'd like to encourage them. That's what the Anamodana is for. It's an expression of your empathetic joy. When the Buddha talks about the various levels of concentration you get into, there's one passage where he says, Modita can get you into the third jhana. Goodwill can get you into the first. Compassion into the second. But the happiness of seeing other people doing good things in the world. That can get you into the third. And so when you see them reaping the results of their good actions, you want to be happy for them. It's an attitude that is often hard for us to develop. <laughs> A lot of our society is based on envy. When they used to have those TV shows, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, they wanted you to aspire to the same sort of things, to make you jealous of other people. Like that cartoon in the, the New Yorker where people are walking along, each one has a stick rising up from his backbone, up over his head or her head, and the string dangling down in front of their face, and there's a carrot on the string. And then off to the side, there's a, a guy in a convertible carrot, carrot driving down the road, looking very happy, and everybody else is looking pretty miserable. Our society makes us focus on the things we don't have, the things we lack, to spur us on to, to work harder. But the Buddha has to spur ourselves on with goodwill, compassion, and empathetic joy. Empathetic joy is not to make you feel lazy. You see other people doing the good things that lead to happiness, and that should be an inspiration for you to do those things as well. You're happy for them, for their good, good deeds, their good merit. He 
you need to realize if you're going to have anything in life, it's going to have to come from your own actions. Not the desire to gain wealth in that way. The Buddha actually doesn't criticize. It's called Uttana Sambhada, one of the bases for happiness in this lifetime. The kind of greed he's talking about here and the, that has to be cleansed out of the mind is the greed where you see somebody else has something and you want what they've got. And you're willing to do any kind of thing to get it. That causes so much strife in the world, so much trouble. And it's a blemish on the mind. It's something you want to wash away. So you wash it away with apathetic joy. Your will, you wash away with goodwill. Stop to think. When you're wishing goodwill for someone, what are you wishing? You wish that they understand the causes for true happiness and that they act on them to the point where they get results. Is there anyone out there for whom you cannot feel that? And you might be able to think of a few people. You'd like to see them squirm a little bit before they finally get on the path to, to true happiness after all the evil they've done. But the Buddha wasn't that sort of person. You know, there's the case of Angulimala, who had killed almost a thousand people. The Buddha had compassion on him. He was able to teach him the Dharma, and Angulimala was able to escape a lot of the bad karma that would have come if he'd continued his ways. There were a lot of people, however, who were not happy for him. They wanted to see him suffer first. They would throw things at him when he was on his arms around. But you can ask yourself, do you want to be the kind of person who throws things at an arahant? If not, we'll try to develop goodwill even for people who have been really evil. May they change their ways. So stop and think if there's anybody out there who, for whom you cannot feel goodwill. It would be good to cleanse your mind right now. Take yourself patiently, step by step by step, to the point you can say, okay, I hope this person would understand the causes to happiness and act on them. When you can think that way, then you become a more trustworthy person. There's no sense that you have to get back at somebody or settle a few scores. When you have this attitude, then you can trust that no matter who you deal with, you will deal in a skillful way. Because this is what you want to be able to trust, that you will act skillfully regardless of the circumstances. We have to maintain our sense of honor. You can say, well, just because so-and-so did something bad, that gives me the, the right to do something bad in return. That kind of attitude is what tears the world apart. The kind of attitude that can have goodwill even for people who are doing evil. So when you're dealing with them, you can trust yourself. That's what keeps the goodness in the world going, because if you had to wait for everybody to be good before you would treat them well, we'd all be at each other's throats pretty quickly. Goodness has to start here, and you have to decide it's going to start with you. You can have this attitude, it cleanses the mind. Then finally, there's straightening out your views, looking at things in terms of karma. that what you do will shape your future, and as it shapes the present moment. Now, karma's not tit for tat. You're not, going to have to, you're not going to have to go through and pay all your old karmic debts before you can get awakening. But a certain type of action will lead to a, that type of result. And if you know that you've got some bad karma in the past, this is when the Buddha has you develop two things. One, as he says, an ability to not let your mind be overcome by pleasure or pain. This is a 
quality we want to develop in the meditation, that we learn how to deal with pleasure and not get overwhelmed by it. We learn how to deal with pain and not get overwhelmed by it. When you've got the mind trained in that way, then you can take anything that comes your way. Secondly, you spread goodwill, develop the Brahma Viharas, so the mind is limitless. And the image that the Buddha has is of someone who's in debt. Some the debt collector comes, and it turns out you've got lots of money. The debt collector can take that amount of money, and you don't feel any problem. If you have no money at all, the debt collector will throw you in jail. So you develop goodness in the mind right now, and that helps to counteract the effects of past bad karma. So the, these are three ways of cleansing the mind that form a good foundation for the meditation, to remind you of why we're sitting here learning how to deal with pain, why we're sitting here learning how to deal with pleasure, why we're trying to find a happiness that's blameless, because the happiness that comes out of greed or ill will, there's a lot of blame with that, realizing that I'm mastering our actions and developing skillful karma, that's how we get out of that blame. It's one of the reasons why we're meditating. It's good to keep in mind, because we cleanse the mind in this way. We can live in the world in a clean way. As you look around you, you find something really hard to see. So be a good example for yourself and for other people around you. It's one of the ways in which you can show your appreciation for the goodness that's been done to you, and you want to pass it around even more to the world.